them cowboy, gotta get these cattle on down. There's a happy go lucky bunch of punchers raring to get to town. Ride them cowboy, sing your way right over the plain. Soon be shipping this bunch of husky cattle out on the morning train. Here we are, and we don't give a guy's darn hoop. Here we are, with a pocket full of steers to boot. So ride them, cowboy, where a smile keeps singing that song. We're a happy-go-lucky bunch of punchers, happy as the day is long. Here we are, and we don't give a gosh darn hoop. Here we are, with a pocket full of steers to boot. So ride them, cowboy, where a smile keeps singing that song. We're a happy-go-lucky bunch of punchers, happy as the day is long. Lay They've got their nerve blocking the entire road. We'll get out of the way as soon as we can. I'll move those cattle. What are you trying to do? Run those cattle off of that bluff? We're in a hurry. This is a public highway, young man. We've got to catch a train. Well, we're doing the best we can. You ought to be arrested for obstructing traffic. I'm sorry, miss, but cattle have the right of way in this country. Out of the way, cowboy. We're going through. I wouldn't try that if I was you. In a hurry, ain't you? Don't get careless, partner. Darn city folks. Always in a hurry, going no place. This is an outrage. You're going to hear from my lawyer. I've been wanting to do that ever since the seen my first automobile. There ought to be a log in them contraptions. Yeah. Ride them, cowboy. Gotta get these cattle on down. We're, We're a happy-go-lucky bunch of punchers raring to get to town. Ride them, cowboy, sing your way right over the plain. There you are, Roy. $2,700. Thanks a lot, Tom. Hey, Roy, that's a lot of money to be carrying around. And you better let me take care of it for you? You better not do it, Roy. That much money to scare him to death. <laughs> oh, shut your head, you wall-eyed, bull-legged runt. Who's bull-legged? When you two get through arguing, you can head back to the ranch. I'm taking this money to Apache Junction. Now, wait a minute. Maybe we'd better go with you, just to be sure you get there safe. When are you two old roosters going to quit worrying about me? <laughs> There's a fine way to talk, ain't it? Me that raised him since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. You raised him? What do you think I've been doing all these years?
I guess that'll hold them for a while, Dinah. You having trouble, Gabby? Where's your horse? Oh, I got done quit a trip and showed me. <laughs> he more than likely fell off. <laughs> oh, is that so? Some of these days, mister, you're gonna go too far. <laughs> You've been saying that for the last 30 years. Yeah, maybe I have. But you ain't gone far enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I wonder what this is. Looks to me like a sinker off a fishing pole. <laughs> fishing pole. Listen to him. Where'd they be fishing for out here, lizard? Gabby, you ride with Chuck Waller. I'm going on to Apache Junction. Oh, I'd rather be seen dead than riding this critter. Now, come on, get up here and quit your belly aching. I'll give you a ride what's a ride. <laughs> Just like an old Sophie. <laughs> took an awful chance trying to make Rogers think it was a holdup. We had to. I didn't want him to run into us scouting around on his property. I guess you're right. There's too much in this for all of us to have any slip-ups now. Don't worry, there won't be any. Shall I go ahead with the survey? No, better not. I'm leaving for New York tomorrow, and by the time I get back, we'll own the Circle R. There'll be plenty of time to... Yes, what is it? Roy Rogers to see you, Mr. Niles. I'll see him in just a moment. It's all right, I was expecting him. You better stick around in case he starts trouble. Hello, Rogers. Howdy, Mr. Niles. Well, son, what's on your mind? I've got that interest money for you. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask for another extension on that loan. Your interest rates have been pretty high, and that's all I can do to keep up my payments. Well, I'm sorry, Rogers, but I'm afraid I'll have to call that loan when it falls due. But you told my father he could have all the time he needed. That's one promise I couldn't keep, even if your father was still alive. Just happens I need cash. Business conditions are bad all the way around. Yes, but that's a lot of money, $26,000. You still have a month or so before it's due. Perhaps you can make other arrangements for refinancing. You know I couldn't do that. Now, look here, Mr. Niles. The Circle R means everything to me. And besides, if I lose it, it'll throw a lot of Dad's old friends out of work. You can't run a business like this on sentiment. Dad should have gone to a bank in the first place instead of one of these fly-by-night finance companies. The way you people work, we'd never get out of debt. This company is operating strictly according to law. If you don't like our methods, that's your problem. We're in business to make money. All right. But if you try to take over the Circle R, you'll have a fight on your hands. What do you think of that, Chuck Wally? <laughs> well, I'll be plumb flabbergasted. And I thought you was a lion to me. Yeah. Roy, you're rich. You can get yourself a pair of diamond studded shafts any time you're a mind to. Look at that. What is it? It's gold. Found right here on your own ranch. Tell them about it, Gabby. You found it. No, it ain't much, Roy. Oh, go ahead. He's just being modest or something. It's pure gold. We just give it the picnic test. Where did you find this? Well, it was, uh, uh, you know, that dry wash out at Signal Butte. Uh, right about there somewhere. Maybe the whole butte's full of gold. No, no, no. I wouldn't figure too much on it, Roy. Gabby, you're a lifesaver. See this? I just found out what it is. It's part of a surveyor's outfit. That's what those three holdup men were doing. They knew there was gold on our ranch. Let's knock on it and get out there. Right around in here, Summers. That is as near as I can remember. What do you mean? You don't know? 
Certainly I know. Just trying to make certain sure, that's all. This is a likely looking formation. I never paid any attention to it before. Maybe this is the spot you meant, Jabby. Maybe. Oh, Roy, would you figure on getting Niles to back this deal? Not by a long shot. This is too big to take a chance on letting anybody beat us out of it. I'm taking this straight to Roger Hammond in New York City. That's right. Your daddy did business with the Hammond Cattle Company for years. Well, cattle's only one of his interests. He's also one of the biggest mine operators in the whole country. Well, well when are you aiming to do this? Right now, we can't afford to lose a single day. Yes, we've got to get to work in a hurry. Now, wait a minute, Roy. I didn't tell you everything. There's Eastbound Limited, tooting for the 10-mile crossing. If she gets away, we'll have to wait till tomorrow. Right. Hey, Roy! Wait a minute! about that sample oil you took from Roger's ranch. I have here the report from my assayer. The highest molybdenum content of any oil we've ever tested. You know what that means, don't you? A fortune for both of us. We can only get control of the Circle R. Mr. McGrath to see you, Mr. Bainbridge. Send him in. Tony McGrath, trainer for Hammond Stables. I pay him to keep an eye on Hammond for me. Hello, Tony. Glad to see you. How are you? Good trip? Oh, nothing very exciting. Picked up wildfire out west. Looks like he's worth a bet. Oh, excuse me. Tony McGrath, Mr. Niles. How do you do? Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Niles just arrived from Apache Junction. Apache Junction? Say, we had quite an interesting experience out there. Ran into a young cowboy and a couple of grouchy old punchers that tried to block the road for us. And they nearly killed themselves trying to catch the same train. Who were they? Well, there weren't any formal introductions, but uh, one of the old boys was named uh, Chuckawalla. And the other one, Gabby? That's right. And the young man was Roy Rogers. Rogers, I'm sure of it. Those three are inseparable. Did they come all the way to New York? Yeah, but don't ask me why. He's probably trying to refinance his ranch. Well, find out. Keep on his trail. Report everything he does. This is the Hammond place. Better wait here till I see how the land lies. And stay out of trouble. Excuse me, uh, can you tell me where I can find Mr. Hammond? 
Has there been a revolution? Is private property no longer sacred? Must I be persecuted in my own home? Well, I didn't know it was you. I, I just wanted... I don't care what you want. Get off my property. Get out. Wait a minute, Dad. Let's find out what he wants. I don't care what he wants. Now, Dad, remember your blood pressure. You never did tell me your name. I'm Roy Rogers. And I'm Peggy Hammond. That man's your father? Yes. And that's Roger Hammond? Yes, of course. Well, goodbye. Wait. Why do you dislike my father? Well, you got the saddle on backwards, miss. He doesn't like me. But I don't see. Well, you see, I came east to sell your father a mine, a gold mine, and a good one, too. But you can see for yourself he wouldn't be interested if it was diamonds. Nonsense. You just don't know, Dad. Well, he sure can fool a fellow. Come along with me. Dad won't bite. Let's see if we can find some of them preserved. I'm darn near starved. Where do you suppose they keep them? Well, they bury them, of course, and give them more flavor. So you're Andy Rogers' son, eh? Yes, sir. Fine man, your father. My cattle company did business with him for years. One of the real cattle barons, Peggy. Now you say there's gold on the Circle R, eh? Yes, sir. I brought along the sand. After lunch, my boy. After lunch. Shucks, Chuck Wally. I've saw more game from a Circle R porch. <laughs> Maybe they call them squirrels game. <laughs> It's a bar. They haven't preserved him yet. Poachers. Hey, you! Head for Nature's cabin. There's more room there. Halt, you! What's all that shouting about? The gamekeepers, probably. You might speak to Mike about it. They let Elsie out. They're headed for the house. Look out for Elsie. This is preposterous. I'll soon put a stop to. Get going, Roy. There's a bar a coming. Hey! Get those hoodlums out of here. Have them arrested. You heard what Mr. Hammond said? Take them to the gate, Mike. Forget about having them arrested. Yes, Miss Hammond. Wait for me at the gate. Where are the hoodlums? Oh, I sent them back to the hotel. I hope it's earthquake-proof. They do have a knack for getting into trouble. I'll never get to your father now. I wouldn't say that. What you need is a manager, and I'm nominating myself. You're elected by a landslide. Now, Mr. Rogers, did you bring some of the ore? I got some of it right here. The first plan of business will have this assay. The second plan will show the report to Dad. If he'll read it. I'll wait until he's in a good mood, and then tomorrow. What about tomorrow? They're running the Valley Stream steeplechase, and Dad's horse is almost sure to win. Do you think so? I know so. Dad'll do anything after that. Well, I hope so. Hop in. I'll drive you to your hotel. Hope he didn't get tired waiting. I drove our Rogers to his hotel. That cowboy of yours didn't waste much time, did he? Mm, strictly business, Tony. Strictly business. I'm helping him sell that a gold mine. Well, is your father going to buy the mine? Well, we've encountered a slight sales resistance. Now, Mr. McGrath, where's that jump you want me to buy? Oh, yes. Yeah. Are you sure Hammond hasn't made a deal with him yet? Not yet, but he'll probably close tomorrow. All this talk about a gold mine is a blind. One of Hammond's tricks to pull the wool over my eyes. But why should he try to conceal anything? Why? I'll tell you why. I kept Hammond out of this syndicate got control of molybdenum and forced him out. Now he's trying to whirl in again. There's one way out. We can keep Rogers from making that deal with Hammond. Do you think we can? I have some friends whom I think will take care of him for us. No rough stuff now. Unless, of course, it's absolutely necessary. I get you. Some Benedictine and about three cases of cognac. Hello, honey. Hello, Mr. McGrath. Let's be in. Yeah, Joe's here. I'll tell him you're here. Stevens won't be on tonight, Slick, so you take the roulette layout. Okay, Joe. Let him in.
Grandpa's outside. He wants to see you. Okay. Big time playboy. Hide that gang. How are you, Mr. McGrath? Fine, thanks. And you, Joe? In the pink, in the pink. <laughs> it's better than being in the red. <laughs> Say, that ain't a bad gig. I, uh, I'd like to see you alone. For what? These are right guys. What's on your mind? Well, frankly, I want a man disposed of. Oh, a bump off. Oh, no, no, nothing like that. I just mean, I, well, I sort of want him kept out of the way for, say, two weeks. Who is this mug? Name is Rogers. He's a cowboy. This will cost you, Mr. McGrath. Well, I expect to pay for it. I couldn't take a job like that for under three grand. Three thousand dollars sounds fair. Where do we find this yokel? I don't know where he is at the moment, but tomorrow he'll be at the Valley Stream steeplechase. Now, if you look for me there, I'll point him out to you. It's in. I'll see you two later. We we'll get you. Ready for the big race? Yes. Everything all set? Yeah, but I'm not so sure we ought to go through with it. You can ride, can't you? Sure, but I was just thinking that... You can't back out. Now, if you win this race, we can sell Dad a gold brick factory. Well, you're the manager. Well, that's more like it. But you two friends know what to do? You can count on them. Oh, Peggy, your father wants to talk to you. Say, hey, Bob, is your name Clyde Barton? That's right. You the regular on welfare? Yes, but I got to hurry. I'll give you my autograph after the race. Uh, just a minute. We'll give you ours now. Oh! <laughs> City folks. <laughs> better hurry. Post time in 10 minutes. Where's Barton? He'd better hurry. I'm sorry, Mr. Hammond. We can't find him anywhere. Well, that settles it. Wildfire's out of the race. Take him back to his stall. Can't we get another rider? He's not a park hat. He takes a lot of riding. I wouldn't have been a bit surprised to see that fellow Barton fall off that horse anyhow. Yeah. Where we come from, they got real riders. Shucks. <laughs> there ain't a man in this state that's fit to carry Roy Rogers' saddle blanket. <laughs> now there's a boy that really knows how to ride a horse. Dad, why not? That's ridiculous. This is a steeplechase, not a roundup. You know, Chuck, I remember the time that Roy Rogers jumped a wild Mustang over a hay wagon and then turned around and jumped him back. Just show the horse who was born. You know, if I was a gambling man, yeah. and wasn't scared to take a chance, no. I'd get Roy Rogers to ride that horse. <laughs> a gambling man, eh? Huh? Well, I'll show them. Tony, tell them to saddle my horse again. Right. Here's Rogers. Tell him he's going to ride Wildfire. Roy, you've got to hurry. All right, you win this race, now buy your mind. Silly folks. <laughs> Rogers is going to ride wildfire. What more do you want? Keep it on, Mac. We've got a rider who thinks he can handle it. Yes, sir. He's inside. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Wildfire, the Hammond entry will be ridden by Mr. Roy Rogers. Don't worry, Dad, he'll win. He'd better. I bet 10,000 on this race. Hey, Roy! He's gone. Oh, doggone it. I wanted to give him this rabbit's foot for luck. What's the matter with you? 
I don't know. I just sat a wildfire when somebody slugged me. That's Roy's horse. <laughs> Jeff Wally and his skullduggery going on here. trying to save Roy from a bad fall. Somebody busted into the stables to get a wildfire, and we figured they'd cut the cinch on the saddle. We'll show you. If they can't prove their statements, wildfire will have to be disqualified. Well, there's, there's nothing wrong here. Here neither. Well, that settles it. Now look here, Bainbridge, you can't this. I'm sorry, Mr. Hammond. And I'm sorry, Mr. Hammond. You're sorry. Bainbridge is sorry. Everybody's sorry. I'm sorry I ever met you. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Wildfire has been disqualified. The winner is Blue Bar. Come along, Peggy. I'll see you later. Well, Roy, I guess we messed the race all up for you. We figured you might get hurt. Well, that's all right. Forget it. Hey, Rogers. Miss Hammond left a message for you. She wants to see you tonight about 9 o'clock at the dunes on Merrick Road. Well, you ain't going without me and Chuck Wally to keep you out of trouble, eh? All right, bring them along, too. Way down south in the land of cotton, that's the place for me. I just want a cheer. Brother, lend me your ear. When the moon shines through a starry sky along that bio show, that's my Louisiana. Who could ask for more? When the smell of southern chicken fry creeps out of my mammy's door, that's my Louisiana. Hello, Hello boys. Sorry we're late. Chuck Weller got his road map twisted. Brother, you ain't heard nothing yet. I love my state, I know it. Don't blame me if I show it. Where to greet you with a friendly You know, this reminds me of the old days up in Klondike. That's my Louisiana. Will it be, boys? Shaq really. Give him some sheep dip. He won't know the difference. What are you going to have? Oh, I'll have a little sass, really. Give me a whiskey for a chance. 
glad to greet you with a friendly smile and welcome to the door. That's my Louisiana. Who could ask for more? Uh, that was fine. Louisiana, look, Roy Rogers. Howdy. And you know Miss Hammond? Hello. Oh, Roy, why don't you sing one of your prairie ballads and give the crowd a treat? But I. Uh, Louie, bring your guitar. Tony. He's going to show us some real singing. Go ahead, Roy. Just me and the rolling hills. Whatever I say, wherever I be, the hills keep calling back to me. Me and the rolling hills, I know how to cure my ills. Whenever I'm blue, I sing the same songs. The hills keep singing right along. Me and the rolling hills, got a lop-eared mule with a pack on his back, following me around. Cause I like to ride where the spaces are wide and hear that far away sound of Come me in the rolling hills. Wherever I am, whatever I do, I still got time to listen to Leola. Me and the rolling hills. About a dance, though. Okay. Hey, who is it, fella? That? That's Big Joe Gillespie. He runs this entity island. Who's a nervous little fella with him? That's his trigger man. His what? His trigger man. You're lucky he didn't plug you. You mean to say the little fella does the shooting for the big fella? That is, if there's any shooting to be done? You guessed it. Has he got anybody around that does his hitting and slapping for him? <laughs> you got it now? When the lights go out, grab Rogers and get him into the car. When you're out in the Bayshore Road, let him have it. But, Joe, I thought Mr. McGrath said that... How many times I got to tell you, Buckets? Let me do the thinking. What if those two old birds interfere? I'll take care of them. There's that trigger, feller. Let's go over there and find out how tough he really is. I tell you, there ain't no such thing as a seven-toed bear. I've shot dozens of them, I tell you, Debbie. What's he know about seven-toed bear? Nothing. No. <laughs> Take care of himself. What do you think this is? A roundup? He would have been if you hadn't butted in. Get him out of here. They started the fight. I'll appear against him tomorrow. Good morning, my dear. Good morning, Dad. Well, I see there's still justice in this country. Rogers and those hoodlums are in jail. I've heard about it. I think it's an outrage. Outrage? Outrage? My dear girl, those roughnecks have outraged decency. They've outraged every dictate of good manners. I might even say, in fact, I will say that... Yes, Foster, what is it? It's Mr. Weldon, sir. He says that... What does that Pop and Jay want? Tell him I'm in conference. I'm sorry, Mr. Hammond, but I'm sure you want to know about this. Want to know what? Well, the ore, the sample your daughter gave me. It's from Roy Rogers' mine. Was there any gold in it? Not a single trace. I knew it. He's an imposter, a confidence man. I'll have my lawyers... Wait, Mr. Hammond, please. The sample shows the richest vein of molybdenum I've ever seen. Molybdenum. 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 Whistling windmills, what I'll do to Bainbridge. 
Foster, get my hat. Get my car. Get my checkbook. Get out of my way. Where are you going, Dad? I'm going to buy Roy Rogers out of jail. my boy. Quite a lark, my lad. Quite a lark. Reminded me of the good old days of Jack's and the Flying Wedge. I don't understand, Mr. Hammond. It's as simple as can be. I've arranged bail for all three of you. You're coming home as my guests. But why? You don't think I'd let the richest molybdenum mine in the world get away from me, do you? Molybdenum mine? Wait till we get back to Seacrest. We'll do this right. I have everything planned. A private issue of stock and we'll control it ourselves. Probably let four or five of my friends in. They'll take the stock on my say-so. Roy, we're going to show Wall Street how these things should be run. Gentlemen, do you realize that this young man is president of the Hammond Molybdenum Corporation of America? Yes. Yeah. Molly, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, 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 Molybdenum... Oh, don't show your ignorance by asking so darn many fool questions. <laughs> What they're doing to us. Down to 43. Niles, it's too risky for you to stay around New York now. If Hammond catches up with you and pays Roger's note, we're ruined. Right. I'll take the first train for Apache Junction. Stay under cover there, and at the first sign of activity, communicate with you at once. Okay. Chuck Wally, this Gideon Dollar promotion business is all right for fellas like Hammond. But me, I wish I'd back on Circle R. Well, I don't see nothing to complain of. We're both vice presidents. The work's light. Well, is it going to last forever? Well, I don't guess so. We'll have to start working the mine pretty soon. What mine? Oh, oh, oh yes, yes, mine. Yeah. I see by the paper where they caught another one of them fellers for selling stock in the fake mine. Oh, oh, what did they do to him? Oh, they just give him eight years in Leavenworth Penitentiary. A eight years? Mm-hmm. The judge said he'd give him more, except that he was a married man with a family. You ain't married. Uh, there you, Gabby. No, no, I never had no time for it. Hey, what are you getting at? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking. Well, don't do your thinking out loud. You, you, you make me nervous. I'm worried about those notes Niles is holding. You needn't be. I'll give you a check in time to cover them. What we've got to do now is arrange matters so as to get that stock of ours on the board. We'll need a detailed engineer's report showing the exact location of the mine. Get Bastler and Hayworth for me. That's the finest engineering firm in this country. We've got to tell these engineers exactly where to look for this mine of yours. It's due west of the ranch house, a place called Signal Butte. That's right, isn't it, Gabby? Where'd he go? What do you got the blinders on for? That's my disguise. I'm skipping the country before the police close in on us. You tell Roy I'll take the blame. Blame for what? Oh, I've been trying to tell him all along, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I've been getting in deeper and deeper, and it's too late. Chuck Wally, I've been lying. They ain't no mine. What? I'm, no, sir, I'm skipping the country. I'm going to South America. Yes, sir. Bonus airs, maybe. This will take care of Niles for you. I'm sure grateful to you, Mr. Hammond. If we'd lost a circle R, I don't know what would have happened to us. Hey, Roy, you got to help me. Gabby's getting ready to leave the country. What's this? We should have known better than to trust him. He said he lied. There ain't no mine. You swindler. Trying to make me the laughing stock of Wall Street. Of the entire financial world. Rogers, we have laws in this country that'll land you behind bars. There is a mine, Roy. There must be. Well, I don't know. If I could only talk to Gabby. Shucks. He's probably on his way to Bones Airs by now. 
No, it's more likely headed back to the ranch. That's where we're going. We've got to get to the airport. You should have told your father what we were going to do. He'd have stopped us. Besides, it's my plane. I can go where I want. Boy, is she a rat. I'd feel more at home on the hurricane deck of a bucking bronco. It's only an air pocket. I know. But some pockets have got mighty big holes in them. I'm sorry, sir, but there's no trace of her. Have you checked with the police department, the hospitals, the... Every one of them, sir. The hotels, the marriage license bureau. Out with it. Did you find her? She's taken her plane. It's been gone since late yesterday. And she took Rogers and Chuckawalla with her. Any idea where they've gone? Apache Junction. She inquired at the airport for the nearest landing field. So that's it, huh? I'll show this young Rogers he can't run off with my daughter. We'll wire ahead to the police. Don't shoot, Sheriff. I give up. All right, all right. Where's Roy? I got a warrant here for his arrest. Run for it, Roy. Take for the hill. Where do you think you're going? Let me go, Roy. I'm taking the blame so they won't put you in the penitentiary. We'll take our chances on that. We're going back and talk this thing over. Dad! So you are here? Yes, I'm here. Well, you won't be for long, and neither will you, Rogers. Sheriff, I want this man arrested for running off with my daughter. He's violated the Lindbergh Law. Just a minute, Dad. It was my idea and my plane, and Roy didn't force me to go with him. I think I can straighten the whole thing out if you'll give me a chance to talk to Gabby. If he's got anything to say, he can say it here and now. You ran off because there wasn't any mine. Isn't that the truth? That's about the size of it. But why did you tell us you found the ore at Signal Butte? Oh, I don't know, except it was a likely looking formation. Besides, I didn't want Chuck Wally to know I was lying. Then where did the ore sample come from? Oh, sounds kind of foolish, but I picked it out of my horse's shoes the day he tripped and throwed me. I remember now. It was the day we were chasing them hold-up men over at Skeleton Canyon. Skeleton Canyon? Then maybe that's where the ore is. You're probably right, and it's on our property. Chuck Wally, Gabby, let's ride out there and make sure. I'm not taking any chances. Tony's driving me to town so I can settle that loan with Niles. Fine, I'll let you know if we find any of that same ore out there. Good luck! Hello, Niles. They found out where the ore is located. Yeah, Roger's on his way out to Skeleton Canyon now. Well, he won't get far. I'll have my men waiting for him. But we've got to keep Hammond from paying off the loan. Now listen, and don't make any mistakes. It's right around in here somewhere. That Pete tripped and throwed me. Sure, there's a piece of the same kind of rock right there. Here's where my experience in the mother old country will come in handy. Yes, sir. Right there. Right there. Right there. Let's smoke them out. They can wait. We've got to tell Hammond we found the old. You might as well make yourselves comfortable. You mean we can't go on? Not a chance. We'll have to send in for a tow car. Well, of all the infernal nuisances. <laughs> the great open spaces. I'll settle for a taxi cab. Perhaps this is one coming. My name's Hammond, Roger Hammond. Our car's broken down. Can you take us to Apache Junction? Why, sure. Jump in. I'll uh, stay with the car. You send somebody out from the garage, huh? All right. Come along, Peggy.
This isn't the way to town. The way we're going. Inside. Hammond hasn't shown up yet. Why has to? We just seen Tony take the car back to Miller's garage. That's right. We here. Howdy, Tony. Hello, Rogers. What happened to Peggy and Mr. Hammond? How should I know? Hammond told me you were driving him into town. Yeah, what if he did? You can tell me the hard way if you want to, Tony, but you're going to tell me. Where's Hammond? Didn't know Tony had that much fight in him. <laughs> Where's Hammond? I don't know, but but Niles does. Niles, huh? Yeah. Now, now let up and I'll tell everything I know. What's going on here? What's the matter, Roy? I haven't got time to tell you now, Sheriff. Hold him, Farman. I'll explain later. Pick up your hat and come with me. It's Niles. We've got to stop Niles. He's in that car. How are we going to do it? I'll show you. Is the man you want. We'll settle that later after you take it to Mr. Hammond and his daughter. Follow us! Chuck Walla. Come with me, Gabby. There's a car coming. Two riders with it. Get inside. Somebody's coming. It must be Roy and the hoodlums. Get away from that window. There's liable to be trouble. Jumpers up in Alaska. You're going to 
be a tough job getting in there. Keep him busy, Gabby. Are you going to add murder to your other crimes? Get in there. And it's quiet all of a sudden. Yeah, they're up to something. What you gonna do? Get in there and bust this thing up. You're the man I've been looking for. Here's your money. Now give me a receipt. Hey, Chuck Wally. Huh? Who told you to put that sign there? Don't have to. I'm a vice president, ain't I? Well, get it over there where it belongs. The two hoodlums are still at it. I'm glad to hear them arguing again. That means everything's all right after all. Thank you.